Let's talk about the best meal to actually clean out your arteries. And I'm talking about atherosclerotic placking. This is some new information that I think will actually blow you away. And you can apply this to a lot of different body problems. And since heart attacks are the number one killer, I think you're going to be glad that you watch this. I was studying um, some research involving germ-free mice because they do a lot of experiments on animals that are uh, germ-free. And like, what is this germ-free thing, right? Well, there's a way to grow uh, an animal um, without any microbes living on or inside them. And so they're really kind of a sterile animal. And that way they can uh, do uh, various experiments uh, and keep the microbiome out of the picture. Now, the question is, can an animal live germ-free? Well, yes, they can survive, but I think they don't survive very well. First of all, they require a lot more nutrient-dense foods to survive because they don't have the help from the microbes. They have stunted growth, underdeveloped hearts, lungs, and their liver is smaller. They even have low cardiac output, so their heart doesn't work as well. The lining on their intestine is thinner, and they also have a lot of uh, GI problems. And their immune system doesn't develop fully, and they have a lot of inflammatory conditions. And there's even atrophy of their lymph nodes. But other than that, they do quite well. So now how does this relate to your arteries? Well, I started looking into the connection between um, germ-free mice research and what kind of effects that can create on your arteries. I want to see if there's any connection between this lack of microbiome or dysbiosis and your arteries. And I found all sorts of amazing, amazing data. When you start to destroy the microbes in the gut, actually in mice studies, or basically have a germ-free mouse, they develop a lot of inflammation throughout the entire body, including the arteries, which is the kind of the trigger of this whole cascade of effects that happens in the arteries with placking. And some people still have this concept that our blood is sterile. Okay, we have no microbes in our blood. It's completely sterile. It's not. There are microorganisms living in your blood. In fact, there are pathogens living inside your plaque in the arteries. Yes, pathogens. I'm talking about chlamydia, H. pylori, staphylococcus. Those pathogenic microbes are living inside that plaque. And you have a lot of other microbes inside the arteries too. I mean, think about how many microbes we have in our guts, living on our skin. Why wouldn't we have them throughout our organs? Well, we do. And so apparently if there's an imbalance in the microorganisms in our body, it can lead to all sorts of problems in our arteries. Now, the other piece of this puzzle that I want to bring up now is there's this one very specific, important nutrient, okay, it's a vitamin, that has this responsibility of keeping the calcium buildup out of the arteries. Because when you have placking, you have inflammation, you have calcium, and you have cholesterol plaques, right? Well, this vitamin, which you may already know, is called vitamin K2. And its job is to keep the calcium out of the arteries, okay? It directs the calcium back into the bone. And if you're deficient in vitamin K2, you could actually build up this calcium in the arteries. Now, the reason I'm bringing up K2 is because guess what makes vitamin K2? Microbes. Your own gut makes vitamin K2. It has the ability to convert the vitamin K1 from leafy greens to vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is in fermented foods because the microbes, the bacteria in those fermented foods can make vitamin K2, especially fatty fermented foods like fatty cheese, okay, which is a fermented product. The fattier the cheese, the more vitamin K2 you're going to get. And other fatty things too, like fatty meats. You can get it from salmon, salami, which is a fermented product. Certain sausages, especially fatty pork sausage, has vitamin K2 up to five times um, other types of sausage. Even certain hot dogs and even bacon can have K2 in it. Now, of course, you also have sauerkraut is loaded with vitamin K2 and, and yogurt. This is interesting because what does the mainstream medicine tell you to do to prevent this placking? Avoid saturated fats. Avoid all these cholesterol foods that have apparently K2, which is like the antidote to this calcium buildup. And there's a great test that you can do. It's called a CAC test. It stands for Coronary Artery Calcification Test. And it is one of the best predictors 
of heart failure, okay? It's the amount of calcium in your arteries. It's a relatively inexpensive test. You can go get it done, and it'll actually give you a good idea of where you are on the stage of this problem. If you were going to take vitamin K2 as a supplement, it works better with vitamin D3, okay? You want to take those together. And the ratio would be this. Every 100 micrograms of K2, you want 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3. But this is what you need to know. Probiotics are atheroprotective. They protect uh, you against this hardening of the arteries and this calcium buildup and this plaque formation. Your friendly microbes are your natural probiotics. The microbes in your gut actually can eat fiber from your vegetables and make certain things as a byproduct. And one of the things they make is small chain fatty acids, which basically is a type of fat that helps lower insulin and helps regulate your blood sugars, which can also help decrease the inflammation in the arteries. Now, the whole point of this video is to take a look at your diet from the viewpoint of, are you living on germ-free, sterile foods? Okay, I'm talking about pasteurized foods. You have pasteurized milk, you have pasteurized juice. Everything is cooked for shelf life. We eat foods from boxes, right, on the shelf canned foods, radiated foods. That's right. They use radiation to kill off microbes so they will last longer on the shelf. I mean, just go to the grocery store and just look on the shelves. You will find so many sterilized foods. It's insane. And also we cook our foods. We cook the heck out of our foods and we basically kill off all the microbes. We don't eat a lot of raw foods anymore. And on top of that, we're eating animals that had antibiotics. You have to realize that one of the big side effects from antibiotics is that now you have this dysbiosis. When you kill off microbes, you kill off the good microbes with the bad microbes. And the microbes that survive become now resistant. And now you have all sorts of additional side effects, one being inflammation. And if you're eating animals that have antibiotics, could that have an effect on your body? I think to some degree it can. When you eat raw foods, and I'm talking about like plants, like um, microgreens that have been grown on soil or, or really healthy plants from your garden, there are a lot of microbes in those raw plants that um, you're getting as well. And they can be considered almost like a probiotic as well. And if someone really understands that concept, they're going to start eating more fermented foods, right? And there are a lot of different fermented foods. Uh, fermented vegetables is a great source of these friendly microbes because not only are you getting uh, more microbes as an inoculation to your existing microbiome, but you're getting kind of this pre-digested food that's easier to digest. And the worse off your digestive system is, the more you should have those type of foods. So let's circle back and take a look at what would be a really good meal that would help with your arteries, okay? And also this meal that I'm going to talk about is pretty counterintuitive if, if you match it up against mainstream medicine for this problem, because we're going to pack this meal with the fattiest cheese, I'm talking about brie cheese combined with fatty pork sausage, and of course sauerkraut, which you know I'm sure that's uh, acceptable by the mainstream medicine. Uh, these other two ingredients probably are not, but just think about what you're getting when you have these three things together. First of all, each one of them is loaded with vitamin K2. Secondly, you're getting something else. All three of these are fermented which means bacteria has acted on these foods to enhance the availability of nutrients. The digestibility of these products are much better because they're fermented, and each one of them are not sterile. They have microbes that you can use in your own body. So the next time you're at the grocery store, start looking at the foods from the viewpoint of how many foods are actually sterile, pasteurized, overprocessed, and make a shift to start buying foods that are more alive more fermented, more enhanced with this fermentation process. So since we're on the topic of placking, there's more to learn about this. And I put this video up right here. Check it out.